Hi everyone, I have for you guys the Kave Math Guide 2 this time around. We're going to do a uh, Kave Nilocom 2D2H with Hydro Triggers, uh, but I'll talk a bit about 1D3H as well. Uh, we'll go through rotation, energy rotation, EI requirements, number of elemental applications instances, which will then tell you the number of blooms, as well as Kave Main Stats and Artifact Permutation, Kave Driver uh, Damage slash DPS Analysis in terms of his uh, talent damage. And then we have the weapon artifact comparison. It's going to be a quick sampling, but not a full suite. But it will more or less cover most of the stuff that you want to know in terms of building him. Okay. And I'll do a TLDR after that. And obviously what else is coming from Kaveh. So without further ado, let's dive, let's dive right in. So you have the Kaveh Nilocom. Obviously Kaveh as the Dendro driver. You can do Kole, DMC, Nahida, Baitu, Yao Yao, etc. as the Dendro of you. This is just to ensure there are more dendro uh, aura to ensure the dendro aura and also dendro resonance because remember this hydro trigger nilo because her body full cost are op af especially when the hp is optimized and next you have uh, either barbara kokomi and even sinchu slash yelan for all the off field hydro and, and more prods one thing I want to call out for Sinchu slash Yelan, right, is that Auto Kave is using like Nomad Tech, right? And can task proc uh, Sinchu and Yelan's Q. It's kind of anti synergistic to go high year on Sinchu and Yelan because their talent damage is high. Their multipliers are high. So it's actually better to go for talent damage on them. So personally, I would recommend Kokomi. Because Kokomi for Nidocoin is very, very straightforward. You can check out my Nido series if you want more info on Kokomi in the Nidocoin as well. Although, new Follow me is the hydro driver there. I'll probably test both out, both meaning uh the Barbara Kokomi as one set and Sinchu Yelan as the other set. Now, second dendro is pretty flexible in terms of options now that we are nearing the end of summary version, which is why I put so many here, right? But personally, I'll just use Baitu uh, for earning compassionate SP, <laughs> companionship SP. But his A4 passive definitely helps. If you check out my previous video, it's A4 passive, even at 1k EM gives you like 8 to 10, 9 to 10 percent boost. But that's pretty good. I mean, especially compared to Kaveh's. Uh, Nahida's EM buff and C2 is very nice too. And then you have the usual for Kole, DMC, Yael, etc. So I don't really want to go into the depth, detail, or depth on this. Now, although I say it's anti synergistic, right? If your Sinchu and Yelan damage damage is a very high, it kind of offsets. Yeah, because even if they go trigger low damage blooms, yeah, talent damage is also very high, so it kind of offsets. So you still can use, it's just that, you know, depends on how puristic you are, how purist you are in terms of looking at the bloom core damage. Yeah, the rupture damage. Okay, so this is the comp. Now, rotation-wise, I'm going to go with a Baizu Noa. Uh, for me, right, I, I'm doing exactly what I mentioned to you guys here. We do have Go Baizu as well as Kokomi. This is a rotation, it's very, very straightforward. It's one of the shortest rotation I have here. <laughs> so rotation is actually very similar to the Kole DMC 2D2H for Nilo, where, uh, okay, just to say this again, the what I did for this previously has like the perfect rotation execution as per post release testing, okay? So there is some uh, basis here. This comp, this rotation focuses on Dendro Aura with Hydro Triggers, which is why we do a strong Dendro application first before we start doing the Nilo multiple cores. Then we interweave Dendro with Hydro. Okay. And finally, you have Kave doing uh, the driver role and sustaining Dendro Aura for your Hydro Triggers, which will be from Nilo's E and Coco C. Again, like I said, you can do Sinchu and Yelan too. It's just that when your Sinchu and Yelan props, they are about the full cost, right? It will not be a high damage. Okay, depends on how you view it, it won't be too bad. And, and I'll talk more about that later. Especially considering the talent damage. Now, Nino Q has 2U application. And in this setup, it can be a little risky to use it in terms of overwriting Dendro Aura because Kaveh's elemental application instances uh, isn't that high. Likewise for Baizu. I mean, it's, it's kind of low if you think about it before a driver. But I will cover this in the elemental yeah, application instances portion. So I really don't recommend using the low skill, but if you really want to use it, you can use it every other rotation and right before Kaveh Q. Okay? 
Oh, if you have if you saw have C1 by 2, right, it would be great to use it before Nino Q as well. So that will actually be the most safe in terms of sustaining of the draw, right? because C1 by 2 will help apply it and draw. And then you have the uh Nilo Q, right? It's 2U, but it's 0.5 S3 on hydro, so it will just completely negate the extra by 2E. So it's actually very safe in sustaining on the draw aura. But the problem is that you slot in another by 2, you slot in uh, Nilo's Q, it's going to have impact to your Nilo E duration because you are slotting in them here, right? So your Nilo E is going to aspire, it's going to aspire earlier than Kaveh's Q or E. I mean, in the first place, it will always expire earlier unless you have C1 yellow. But what I'm trying to say here that it expires even earlier. Okay? So the TLDR for this whole portion here is just that. Very, very simple. I will only use Nilo Q if I have C1 by 2 and C1 Nilo. And do by 2 second E followed by Nilo Q right before Kabe Q. Also, only use it every other rotation. Okay? So that's it. Now, you have three hues on this comp. If you notice, you have by 2 heals, you have Kokomi healing, and then you have Kaveh's passive, right? So you pretty much can't die in this comp. Other than the 100% death uh, scenarios like Raiden or the Scarab with weekly boss effect, right? So if you actually end up dying with 3 heals on this comp, something is very wrong. Okay? <laughs> you need to relook at how you're playing the game. <laughs> if that really happens. Okay? So I can say that this is like a super safe comp per se. Alright, let's move on to talk about energy rotation and ER requirements. So you'll see that the energy is kind of high, higher than where I, like, where I would like it to be. So in this comp, Nilo and Kokomi ER sets are not required because they're not using their Q. But Kaveh and Baizu does require more ER, especially on the case on the side of Baizu. Right? And because he needs more ER here, it, means, it also means that Baizu signature and constellation do have a much better impact here compared to the Sinocom in my Bino, by 2 Mav Guide 2. But, uh, since we are using Kokomi and Nilo as the uh, Hydro Triggers, right? It means that they need to invest in EM, and for Nilo, you need to invest in HP plus EM. And we are doing Mav for Kave here. So Kave is not going to be using Fervonius, by 2 is going to be using Fervonius instead of Protoxide Amber. But doing this will make it difficult to hit 50k HP on your by 2 because of his low base HP for a 5 star HP screen character. Uni has like 13k base HP. Most 5 star HP screen character will have 14.5k HP to 15k HP. It's usually 14k plus. But he only has like 13.3 or 13.2k. So it's a little on the low side. So I can tell you guys, even with my artifacts for a 4D wood uh, memories by 2, right? I'm only able to hit 45k HP along with such high ER. And also don't forget CR for Favonius. So it's it's not looking great for, for Y2 as like a second dendro in terms of the battery function that it provides. That's next to no battery. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. Because uh like I said, his low base HP is the biggest problem. With the low base HP it means that you need more stats on HP that takes away from all the other stuff. Now, alternative will be obviously Kaveh using 4 DM, by 2 using something like 20% uh, HP X2 to hit the 15k HP, or even for H OHC for some additional damage. Perfectly fine. But, uh, I I'll talk more about Kaveh artifact options later. Okay? So, using TMC, TMC instead of by 2 will actually allow you to look a lower Kaveh's ER by like 20 to 30, such that base rows are sufficient to cover. But you lose the damage bonus from by 2 passive in return for a 60 EM boost from DMC What about it of course? Now if you have look at the uh, previous video that I uploaded on the by 2 passive versus Nilo passive versus uh, Kaveh's Q bonus, right? It is very very straightforward and you will see that, that the damage bonus from by 2 passive is definitely better than just 60 EM boost Okay? So that's energy now let me talk about the number of elemental application instances. So this doesn't change the standard for Nilo. By 2, this is his uh, elemental application instance at C0 obviously. So at C0, he's uh, pretty much the same as a uh, DMC without Electro Transfiguration. Now Kave, you get only 5 from the 14 hits of normal attack during Q, 3 from E, because I want to say second cooldown in terms of the entire rotation, one from Q, 
Uh, if you have C6, that's another 4. So he only gives you like 9 or 13. It's actually not that high considering that he's a dendro driver. It's on field doing driving, right? And yet it's not that high, fortunately. Now, Kokomi, if you only use Kokomi as a heal bot, or just for, should I say heal bot, but just for his, just for her E without her normal attacks, it's only going to be 6 instances. This is why you get lesser blooms. You get total 16 or 19 blooms if C1 yellow. Which is, like I said, a little on the low side because uh, this is mainly due to lower application for Kokomi because we are not using Kokomi as a driver now, we are using uh, Harvey. In fact, Kirara, which, uh, who, for whom I've already finished Math Guide 2, right? She actually has a higher number of blooms. She's uh, sitting at 23 slash 24 or 27 if C1 Nilo. So generally speaking, she has like 6 more. No, oh, sorry, 8 more. What's wrong with me? <laughs> she has like almost 8 more blooms. But this is mainly due to Barbara's E lasting a longer time. It's better synergy with uh, Kirara. It doesn't make sense. It's pretty bad to use Barbara with Kave. Uh, I mean, it still works. It's just that you'll be wasting your Kave's AoE to proc uh, Barbara's ring by instances. Because you, you just pretty much have to be like sticking to the enemy. Now, if you use Sinchi or Yelan, you can definitely proc more, but it will not be high EM cost. However, this, and this is a portion where I'm going to talk about how best to use someone like Yelan. Okay, if you have the 5 star weapons that gives EM team buffs, like Allergy, Key of the Kindly Suit, and uh, even Nahida's or Kokomi using, oh no, sorry, you're going to replace Yelan with Kokomi, so I don't need to mention the Nahida signature weapon. So using Yelan will actually be pretty strong. Why? Because of all the team buff, it's very, very straightforward, right? The Ye Lan Bountiful cost will obviously not hit as high as the EM Kokomi, but it's not too low because if all the EM buffs and you get more cost, plus good talent damage too, even with allergy. Now, for me, mass reference, right, I can actually get about 700 EM, and in fact, it's 860 if it's uh, R5 allergy, or my Ye Lan if it's placed in this combo, I don't have R5 allergy personally, I only have uh, R1. And this is without changing her artifacts, okay? The mode that we actually have damage artifacts used in a mono hydro comp. Now, obviously, to optimize her in this such in such a comp, you will need more ER, so that will change my uh, stats. I might even get more EM. It's possible, but I wouldn't really go to it. Yeah, uh, you still you should still maintain having damage artifacts on her with uh, sufficient ER that's required. So what all of this means, right? What I'm trying to say here is that uh, Kave isn't that great because the total number of blooms are less, are lesser than say a normal Pole, DMC, Nilo, uh, Kokomi. And if you replace Kole or DMC with uh, Nahida, it would be even better. Yeah, because of the buffs and stuff that uh, Nahida brings to the table. Now, in terms of elemental application, Ye Lan actually provides a, a decent amount in terms of the hydro triggers. She gets two from E, one from Q, six from uh, 17 slash 18 Q prods, and her C2 actually gives you eight. Each of her C2 has no ICD, has its own uh, ICD tag, if I didn't remember only, so it will always apply elemental elements. It will also always apply hydro. So what this means is that you get either 9 from Yelan or 17 with C2, which means you get 19 or 22 with C1 Nilo and 30 blooms if C2 Yelan plus C1 Nilo. So for low spender, right? You hit 30 blooms. It's crazy. That's almost almost half of a uh, KV with C0 Nilo. Yeah, it's crazy if you think about it, man. So, uh, then you, the next question comes to mind, right? Is it sufficient to, to, to do this? And I can tell you, Dendro from Baito and Kaveh is actually sufficient for 32 Hydro Triggers. So 30 is not an issue. But one thing to note is that Yelan does have a, like, a higher frequency. I'm talking about like, within a set amount of duration, maybe within a 2.5 second duration. She actually applies quite a few, few times. So there is a chance to lose Sandra Aura. But remember, Hydro is 0.5x. So it may be doable, but I have to test it out to be sure. Okay. 
So, but for my math route, right, I will just go with the F2P friendly route using Kokomi because obviously weapon banners at least have to be friendly. But I wanted to provide this analysis analysis so that it's at least there. So, and the other thing is I want to show you guys that if you try to focus on Kaveh Dendro Trigger, right, it's also bad. Because Kaveh only gets like, what, 9 instances if you don't have C6, if you have C6 and it's 13. So you get very little cost. So I really, really uh, don't like the fact that he skip wants him to trigger, but yet his ins elemental instance uh, application is elemental application instance is not that impressive. So yeah, it's a little painful. Now moving on, let's talk about Kave main stats and artifact permutation. Now, before we go look at the damage, I just want to give you guys a very, very quick look at the artifact permutation. Obviously, it should be his. Sorry, I have some typos here and there. Uh, probably going to get... Uh... <laughs> so, in here, because he is doing Hydro Trigger, I am doing... You can ignore this. I am doing... such permutation, which is Attack, Elemental, and CR. Okay. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. I think. Am I okay? Just ignore that. Just ignore this section. This is obviously for by two previously. <laughs> Just look at this four here. Okay. So in terms of like CRCD, right? Because I'm using WGS here with Greystone. Because I decided to go for that. I think that uh people who did try the weapon banner or at least on standard banner pools, right? You may have already gotten a WGS so uh, I would think it's a more how should I put it a more common weapon than say something like Red Horn Stone Treasure which is uh, Ito's signature but regardless what I wanted to showcase here is more about the stats that we have so it's like a full on DPS build okay so this is the kind of stats that can achieve with a full on DPS build in terms of the stats uh, in terms of the attack not really the HP though uh yeah you know the HP portion okay so yeah those are the stats it's the usual uh five artifacts rule gone wrong artifact rules gone wrong so the main thing i want to show was that it is using uh attack sense with damage gobbler and a crit circlet because we are not doing triggers here so i just want to see how his damage his damage is like when you go full crit dps and these are the figures. At C0, we have this. Now, WGS here means that the less than 30% HP effect on WGS is uh, active. So you do see that uh, it's, not, it's getting higher, but it's not that much. It's basically a damage that I would expect a 4 star to provide in a Nilo comp, where majority of damage comes from the body of course anyway. Carve's damage will be better in spread comp, given his uh, high application rate when on field. But obviously not 5 star level. Like, Kavi is actually really low, to be honest. 9 instances for uh, on field driver is actually pretty bad. Now, for reference, for reference, Kave with WGS is only 10k damage higher in terms of the talent damage, higher than Kirara with PJC. But if the WGS effect is active, then he does about 30k more than uh, Kirara. So it's not that impressive. The damage is pretty much the same as Kirara. Which means the damage is in the middle ground where it's okay to go for it, it's also okay not to go for it. Which is good news for FTP players. In fact, I'll do a quick weapon and artifact comparison later so that you guys can see the best way to build him. Okay. Uh, wait, let's try uh, this. This should be deleted. My bad. Okay, so moving on. I actually included Red Hornstone Treasure. And milk flower here. Okay, likewise, the artifact permutation is 2 dm to 18% attack versus 4 dm. And you have the damage figures here. Okay, each set is over here. So, few points of comparison Red Horn Stone Treasure is 5k better than WGS without the less uh, than 30% HP effect, while 14k better with it. Sorry, 14k lesser with it. 
WGS is easier to get to, but it's also more defunding on your artifact crit sets. So if you have old weapons, it's up to you. They are pretty close. But for Mute Flower, the new F2P weapon, right? That we got last version, I think. Was it this version? I think last version. It's only 30k damage lesser than WGS without the less than 30% uh, HP effect. So you can think of, you can think of it this way. You can just utilize the free weapon Mute Flower if you want to. Because if I put things into, perspective, into perspective, right, a fully optimized Nilo with, uh, say, a 1k EM trigger, right, doesn't matter whether it's Kokomi or Nilo, okay? Just the Hydro trigger, or, or hell, it can even be a Dendro trigger if you want to, just 1k EM. Each multiple call will do more than 30k. So if you think about it, right, you give Milk Flower to Kave, he does 30k lesser damage in the entire 20 seconds. Is just like missing only one party full call, which you will get a lot of it during the uh, rotation itself. So yeah, it's really inconsequential. You can just use Mew Flower, to be honest, and better utilize your WGS on other characters. Yep. And which also means... Wait, sorry. I'm <laughs> jumping the gun here. So let me talk about this point here before, because, because I was, I was going to go on to talk about this point here. Uh, let me just talk about this, okay? Now, the reason why I included 2DM, 2 18% attack versus 4DM, right? Is to show that the 2DM, 2 at 18% attack permutation is only 11, 10 to 11k more than 4DM. So, if you're not expecting Kave to be a reaction trigger, you can, it's just better to, it's, it's better to just use 4DM and let your second Dendro go for more damage. Be it 4GD or 4 OHG in the case of Pi 2 or even 20% HP S2 to hit 50 HP on Pi 2 if you want to, right? What I'm trying to say here is that it's not that big of a loss to go for DM on Kave if you're not doing reaction trigger. Now, bear in mind that this is Mute Flower with crit stats on artifacts. You go for a full EM Mute Flower, right? And by full EM, I mean like having one A7 EM X3 on the Sands, Goblet, Crystal Glut, and not going bothering with crit stats, right? Then the damage falls out to about 37k total versus uh, 107k here. So in other words, if you are lazy to switch artifacts between Kave, where depending on whether he's a reaction trigger or not, what I can recommend is just build him with full EM, build flower, and four paradise, uh, four flowers of paradise loss. Why the one but for his reaction trigger, right? So even if it's not doing the re even if it's not triggering reaction, you will just dish out about 37k talent damage at C0, which if you think about it is about 110k less than say either a WGS or Rehon Soon Treasure. Uh, about that range wise. If it's uh about 4 DM with crit stats, then uh 4 DM mute flower with crit stats then even lower. But worst case scenario, think about it, 110k is still not about still slightly less than four multiple calls. I mean it's starting to matter a little. But if you if you consider the ease of building him this way and not having to switch artifacts and also against the total damage of from multiple calls, total damage meaning all the multiple calls that you can trigger, then the hierarchy doesn't matter as much. So it's really your choice. I mean, personally, because I do have the artifacts and stuff, right, and the weapons, right, I'll probably try out, like, uh, full crit DPS on him. But eventually, I'll probably land with the, uh, this build here, like, full EM, milk flower for FPL. Uh, eventually. So I, I can free up the artifacts from other characters as well. Yep. If you know what I mean. So basically what I mean is after Kave he's level 10, I'm not using companionship level 10, friendship level 10. And if I'm not using him anymore, then I'll definitely just put him build him like this. And so that in future when I do use him, uh, I'll just stick to this. Uh, I'm perfectly fine dealing 110k lesser talent damage in a comb where we are gonna get a lot of bounty full cost anyway. Bounty full cost damage anyway. Although using Kave does get reduced the number of bounty full cost, so I mean <laughs> I'm not using him. To be honest, I may end up not using him after he gets French level 10. Brutally honest. Okay. 16 or 19 blue total is, is, little, is a little low. 
If I didn't remember only when you do Kokomi as Hydro Driver, you do uh, it's definitely more than 20. Like 22, 21 or 22. And then with Nahida, you get even more. Something like that. Okay. So anyway, that brings me to the TLDR of uh, today's math guide. So let me go through that. Now, oh, team clan wise, generally speaking, in a Kave, Nilo Kong going for Hydro Triggers, the remaining two members, you need an off field Dendro and Hydro Applicator each. Please refer to the specific session for the flex options, because there's quite a number of them. Now, rotation wise, this is the rotation, I'm not going to go through the whole rotation, but it's basically the usual where you do a strong Dendro application and then you interweave your Hydro and Dendro. And finally, Kave drive since he's the driver. So please refer to the specific session for details. For energy, Kaveh will need approximately 150 ER if paired with Baitu, and Baitu will need 220 ER. So please refer to the session for details again, because like I said, this is TLDR, I'm just going to give, give you the ER required. Okay, in terms of the elemental uh, application instances, you only get 16 or 19 blooms if it's C1 Nilo, which, on which honestly is a little on the low side, but this is mainly due to low application for me, because we're not using head as driver, we're not using uh, Kave as a driver. So you get lesser hydro triggers. But if you think about it, right, even Kirara has a high number of blooms because Kirara can achieve 23 to 24 or 27 if C1 Nilo because of Barbara's E lasting a longer time. And also it's better synergy with Kirara, right? No matter what, you will be able to apply the uh, hydro from Barbara when you use Kirara. Like Kirara is literally made to do work with Barbara instead of Kokomi. I mean, it still work with Kokomi, but yeah, you know what I mean. Now, but if you don't know what I mean, you should check out the Kirara uh, math series that I have. Uh, if you use CLR instead of Kokomi for more Hydro Triggers, then it will be total 19 blooms or 20 blooms with 2 blooms with C1 Nilo. And if you happen to have C2 ELR and also C1 Nilo, you get a whopping 30 blooms. But because you get less, it's also low, lower EM uh, particle cost, right? Lower EM blooms. So they, they do deal lesser damage, but she does more than Mesa for you with a talent damage if you really want to. Although the talent damage is single target, Bloom is AoE. So that's another perspective to consider. But to summarize, right, I will only recommend Yelan if you can afford to equip Allergy on her and Key on Nilo for more team EM buff so that it doesn't feel as bad in terms of the fall off of your Bloom damage. But, but, but regardless of whether you have these uh, 5 star weapons, Yelan does provide a risk of overwriting Dendro Auras because of the rate of frequency of her elemental application instances. Instant, in terms of like the overall, right, you definitely have enough Dendro to sustain the Hydro. The problem is Yelan applies Hydro so much and so fast, especially if you have C2, that you may run into a situation of uh, an overwriting. And if that happens, then the Yeon Kave becomes uh, useful. But I'll, I'll definitely have to test it out to see whether Yelan will cause this issue, especially C2 Yelan. And then moving on next to... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Forgot to update this. I should have done a find all, replace all, right? Okay, so Kavi's damage is kind of in the middle ground. Where it's okay to go for it, it's also not okay to go for it. So it's actually pretty good news for FTP players. When I say to not go for it, it also means that you just forget about crit stats and go full HP, full EM, sorry, full EM with a Favonius or Mute Flower. Oh yeah, suspect. Oh my, I may have uh, updated this last session on another worksheet. <laughs> Cause I duplicated a few to do all the weapon math, right? Cause there's three weapons that I, co I compared here, right? Now, full EM isn't good if you're not going for Hydro Triggers, but it's pretty much mandatory if you want to go for Dendro Triggers in a 1D3H scenario. However, Nahida is still better for 1D3H because the Kave's Dendro application is still lower. And obviously this is Nidocom, where majority of the damage is from body focus. In comes where Kave is constantly triggering spreads, our aspect's personal damage to be better. But then again, because its elemental application instances aren't too high, it's actually not that great either. Unless you have C6 Kave. If you have C6 Kave, this is 13 instances, then it's not that bad, right? This you get 13 spreads. Overall, throughout his overall rotation. But the thing is, for spread comps, right, you already have very good on team field DPS options like Hyatam and Ahida. Why do you want to force the case with Kave? Unless uh, you really like Kave, his play style, everything, and you do you. Okay? But just know that it's not that great.
All right, now let me talk about the Red Artifact Compressor, and this is the one where I'll just tell you guys what to build. <laughs> in the Porsche in red here. But before I go there, Red Hornstone Treasure is very close to WGS, while Milk Flower is about 30k damage lesser than WGS uh, without a less than 30% HP enemies effect. So you can just utilize the free weapon Milk Flower if you want to. To put into the perspective, a fully utilized Nino with a 1k EM trigger gives you uh, more than 30k damage on each bountiful call. Each bountiful call. So if you use Milk Flower, you only lose one bountiful call worth of damage on the uh, Harvey talent damage. So why not, right? Why not just fully utilize the free weapon? Now, 2DM2 so 18% attack is only uh, 10 to 11k more than 4DM. So you might as well just use 4DM on Harvey if you're not expecting to do the reaction trigger and let your second Dendro go for more damage. Be it 4GD or 4H OHC in the case of Bai2, Ocean Hugh Clamp. Um, even 30% HP has to hit 50k HP on Baito if you want to. We need to. Uh, bear in mind that uh, when I say 30k lesser is for Milk Flower with Crystal on Artifact, if you go full EM, then the damage falls off to about 37k total. So, in other words, to summarize, if you are lazy to switch artifacts between Kaveh being reaction checker and not, you can just build him with full EM, Milk Flower, and 4 FPL. And he will dish out about 37k talent damage at C0, which is only about 110k lesser than, say, uh, R1 Stone, Rehon Stone Treasure or R1 WGS. Which is okay, right? If you consider the ease of building him, <coughs> the ease of building EM on him, and comparing against the total damage from multiple calls anyway. Like 110k, I mean, it's not too low, but it's also spread in 20 seconds. So 120k in 20 seconds, so it's about like what, 5k per second? 5.5k per second. If you look at the bountiful calls, the amount of damage that bountiful calls provide, you know, total damage, yeah, 110k is something that you can honestly forego. But like if you're so hardcore, you want to optimize further, then yes, you should use a Rehon Stone Thresher or WGS. Get that little bit more uh, talent damage. So, your choice. Gonna leave it up to you guys. Uh, I'll pro obviously try out both because I have the resources in game anyway. I'll probably end up with this OEM milk flower and 4 FPL just to make my artifact distribution easier because <laughs> the O is so popular, right? Oh, uh, I didn't mention Fervonius, but you you can kind of expect that Fervonius will be slightly lower damage than milk flower, but it's definitely a feasible option if you want to. So that brings me to the end of my uh, Mav Cave Mav Guide 2. So we have completed basically the Bloom 2D2H for the comm itself as well as artifact compressor and weapon compressor. And if you think about it, even the constellation is done. Because C0 is sufficient, because especially since C0 by 2 is sufficient too, and they come together in the same banner, right? So hopefully while you're trying to pull for C0 by 2, you get C0 cafe or, or even more cafe comms. And then you're done. You're done. You don't need to pull for more. That's me. You don't need to pull for more. And by 2 doesn't even need his signature weapon. I mean, it's nice to have when you don't have a good dendro battery or you don't have a uh, electro resonance. But Prototype Ember is pretty much good now. Yep. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, that if you like the content, remember my video and click subscribe for more. I hope this uh, Cafe Math Guide 2 is helpful to you guys. And I'm sorry if I sound like I'm doom posting on him, but I'm not. I'm really just looking at the facts and what I have analyzed to come up with a conclusion for him. I do like his playstyle and I'm definitely gonna have some fun using him. But you know, you just, just gotta be just go in with open are your eyes open and know that it's not gonna be like the most optimal in either of his comps because of his elemental application instances being low. Okay? And damage wise it's just a typical four star so uh, I'm not gonna lie, I will be looking forward to Kirara more than Kave. I'll still, I'll still use Kave, I'll get him to friendship level 10. Yeah. Alright, thanks everyone for watching, bye!